Welcome back to the hyperbolic trolling chamber. We are back once again. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna keep it 1,000. We are in a deep battle with dopamine regulation. It is actually super hard not to abuse dopamine. I mean, I guess we all just some animals in the end, but it is actually very difficult. So, that being the case, yeah, it's just a battle. Uh, I've been reading some good books recently, though. I'm thinking maybe we start doing like we might start doing like a quote of the day thing, but we'll see. But yeah, I'm definitely feeling low energy today, so we're going no lights. <laughs> we're we're dark mode. This. <laughs> At this point, there's no there's no viewing experience. There's no, literally no viewing experience for the viewer. So I'm not really sure, but <laughs> we're gonna have to go dark mode because I the light that shines on me is so bright, and I actually want to die. So we need to figure out a way to not have it be so bright. Maybe I'm literally just gonna somehow. Oh, we could just raise the ISO. I never realized this actually. I was trying to get more quality out. Okay, yeah, this is pretty bad. I think there's also something to do with F-stop. If we raise this, to get brighter. Okay, this is as good as it's gonna get, but <laughs> this is where we're at. The light is too bright, and it is just the worst. It's actually so bright. I don't know how content creators do it, but I don't even know if we would consider ourselves. I don't even know if we would consider ourselves a content creator, but. What I do know is that we are in a deep battle, okay? And unfortunately, turning the lights off is just how we're gonna have to win. So maybe I can set up some lights in other places where it's just not gonna be as as crazy in here, but yeah. Uh, it's been tough, I can't lie. It has definitely been tough. Somehow we've made it to, somehow we've made it to 210 days. This heap stuff is really testing me. I'm not exactly certain why, but it's really testing me. I'm not in, I'm not enjoying this. And maybe maybe that's part of the maybe that's part of the issue with the uh, what we've been doing so far. Or maybe it's not right. We're playing. We're doing the leak code problems. It used to suck to do, but now that I actually can do some of them, it's actually kind of fun to just sit here and kind of have an anchor for boundless creativity. But at the same time. Now we're not doing that. We're just sitting here having to figure out how the heap thing works. And that is actually kind of the worst. And that's not exactly super fun. So maybe we need to do, maybe I need to add something so that I'm always learning so that when I am learning, it doesn't feel like the worst thing in the world. So maybe we need to create a habit of learning. I read a lot, but it's not quite the same as, I don't explain it. I kind of read for, Reading is like a good stage for hyperfocus because they usually say that hyperfocus is, is hyperfocus is the foundation of hyperfocus is a small stream of rewards. When I read, that's generally what happens: small stream of rewards. But <clears throat> yeah, we need to figure this out. So maybe I'll add something. Maybe I'll add something to the list and we'll just try and, and learn for five minutes a day or something like that so that when we do have to learn something we're not fighting because in, in a way our process so far we've figured out how to show up to leak code but another way uh, learning was kind of a symptom because we're trying to basically solve the problem then we got to a point where we kind of got uh, to we pretty much got to a point where we just had to learn by doing the problems which is kind of useful 
and it's a much less abrasive version of just having to sit there, read something, and have someone explain it to you and understand it. So I think the final thing to maybe wrap everything together, maybe we can build a habit of learning again. Something like active learning though, reading is not quite the same. And we already kind of have a habit of reading. Maybe something active like a course. Maybe I'll try to do five minutes of a course every day and then we'll see. I think that should fix it. Because there's an aversion I have to just sitting down and learning the thing. And we used to have that problem with Lico. We got far enough so that we could just pretty much do problems. And that kind of worked out pretty well. So, yeah. All this to say, the, the struggle is real. And today we're doing more heaps. We're probably going to do a slightly shorter session today. Just because I'm low on brain sauce. And at the end of the day, the goal is to always... Uh, sometimes you have to walk to run. I'm noticing there's actually a pattern now. We do pretty well for about two or three weeks and then we need a small break. And maybe that's fine, right? Because either way, some of the days that we did 20 or 25 minutes, they've allowed us to continue to, 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 those last, to, to these last few weeks where we've been able to do like quite literally an hour a day. So that's a good sign. But yeah, it's hard not to abuse dopamine. Someone's got to say it. The, the, the powers that be are colluding to make, to remove every convenience, to remove the reason to do anything, basically. So, convenience and super stimulus may be the bane of man. But, either way, it doesn't change what we have to do today. So, we do have to do some LC. I don't think we have any comments. Because <laughs> at this point... I'm basically just making the viewing experience as poor as I can. At this point, I'm just making the viewing experience as poor as I can for uh, the viewers. <laughs> it, it, it helps in making it easier for myself, so. Who knows? Who actually knows? That being the case, we're probably going to jump into the leak code. Maybe I need a break on the heap stuff. We might just do some regular problems today, honestly, and come back. Heat for tomorrow. I think we spent like five days on it. And my brain is just sauced out. Of, I mean, my brain is just sauced out. So I, I think we could do that. So it looks like we've already done this one. We did have some problems lined up. Also, this whole thing would have gone away if we had just used Python or any language with the data structure. So we're going to try today for 30. As always, the minimum I said I would ever do, I think, is 15. It's what we started with. I think day one is 15 minutes. And that's how kind of we got here. Always doing, oh, instead of selling, setting a ceiling, we'd set the minimum. And the minimum is pretty much the worst you'll ever, you, imagine the worst day possible. And then imagine yourself doing it. And that's the amount we chose, which was 15 minutes. Honestly, that might be a little too high. But 15 minutes seem to be like a lucky number, so we're gonna stay with that. But today we're gonna do 30 minutes for some recovery. Oh, my sleep, my sleep has also been trash recently, so I guess we can jump into it. So we have number of valid clock times. You are given a string of length five called time. You're given a string of length five called time. Given a string of length five called time, representing the current time on a digital clock in the format HH colon MM. Earliest possible time is zero zero, and the latest possible time is 2359. In the string time, the digits represented by the question mark symbol are unknown and must be replaced with a digit from zero to nine. Return an integer answer. Turn it into the answer, which is the number of valid clock times that can be created by replacing every question mark with a digit from what, zero to nine. So we're given the string five characters in a style of HH colon MM in military time. We're gonna 
gonna give us a question mark. How many question marks can we get? Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. So, how many different numbers can we get based off of each question mark? So, assume the time is going up from the smallest side, which would be the minutes side first, and we have tens of minutes, and then we have hours, and we have tens of hours. No, no, no. Yeah, we only have minutes and then hours. We have places for that, so you can have, I guess, a minute, and we can have tens of minutes, and then we can have an hour. And we're like, yeah, like we said earlier, tens of hours. If we don't look at it as time, more as a range of numbers. So from zero through nine, you have nine possible values. If you had question mark on the far right side, if you had a question mark from the second portion of the time, then how many different values could you have? You have nine different values again. a question mark at the lower hand of the hours then you could have at max 23 different no 24 different values with zero being one of them could you yeah with zero being one of them and then if you had this question if you had the top question mark missing you could have at max Two or three. It's either zero, one, or two. So I think this answer is actually quite simple. We just want to know the number of different possible times. And we I think we can get this by just multiplying uh, like combinations. So for each place, we consider the big H to be, is my screen so small? We consider the big H, consider the big H, right? The range is zero, one, two, and that's it. We consider little h, the little h's range, zero, one, two, three. Right, and if we consider, might be going down the wrong path with this, but we'll check anyway. If the first M, the range is zero through nine. And the little M, the range is also zero through nine. But it ranges. So I think we can figure this first one out if we just, uh, so the thing that depends, right, the range depends on the next number, right? So zero, one, or two depends on the next number. If the little hour is three, right, then our range is gonna be capped at one. If it's two, however, actually no, if it's three, it's gonna be capped at two. 
if it's, I mean, if it's greater than three, right, it's going to be capped at one. So if it's greater than three, we want to subtract one to H, so we get one. Right, then we have five. And I realize now this one's also zero through nine. Since it's a question mark, and since this is five, we get one, and then yeah, I guess we would just get two, and then pretty much the number of remaining symbols multiplied should give us the answer, I think. Because I'm realizing it's probably, if we take the next example, something like zero, something like zero question mark zero, right? The first value is zero, right? And we can't, we don't have any symbols to choose from. So we go to the question mark, the next symbol is a zero. Since the next symbol is a zero, or I guess since the previous, We have the little hour cares about the previous one. So since it's zero, the max that it can go up to is nine. So we'd get nine. Right, and zero is zero. The next value that this can go up to is also nine. The answer is 100. Maybe the, I don't know why I'm thinking this way. Another solution is we could just generate all possible times, which wouldn't be that many. It would pretty much just be 59 times 23, I think. And then we could create a string, right? If we generate all the possible times, then we can just check which times uh, match the same style that the string here has. I wonder if there's a follow-up to this. The question then, that would take constant time question mark? We would generate all the times. The times are going to be the same every time. It's going to take the same time to generate them. And given any time, we'll be able to count. So maybe we'll just do that.
one thing we can say right is if time right if time I don't know what it's called and is it contains or is it has I think it's includes if time doesn't include a question mark then we'll just return zero so here the here we'll know that it has at least one question mark you want to generate all the times this is just going to be an array array of strings it's going to start empty how could we generate all the times well, the, it goes from 0 to 2359. So, it looks like we could just go hour is equal to 0. An hour has to be less than or equal to 23 hour plus plus. We could duplicate this for min is equal to 0, less than or equal to 59. We'll say times Right, we'll say hours less than 10. Then what we want to say is we'll just use some string concatenation. We'll put a zero before it and then we'll put hour inside. Otherwise, we're just going to take hour. We'll do the same thing for min. And then we'll say times dot push hour s colon. Uh, and actually, we could even make it even simpler. For the missing question marks, we can just remove them from when we push them into the array. And actually, now I realize we don't even have to generate them. We can just do this all in one go. have the generated time uh, And then we can keep track of something called removed indexes, which would just be an array. Okay, and then we'll have question mark idx dot push i, and then we'll change this to be let i equals zero, i is less than, actually, 
we can just say let letter And then <clears throat> we're almost done. Uh, we can just check for the indices that have missing question marks. Actually, we can change it to non question mark IDXs. And then, what this will allow us to do is actually check that the values that we care about matter. So, I mean, it exists. So, for each const index of Can do something like if generated time non question mark IDX will say time sub IDX is equal to I think we're just doing minor optimizations at this point we'll just say for const IDX of question mark IDX <clears throat> And then we'll change this back All right we'll turn it to a question mark and then we'll literally just check I wish we had mutable strings in JavaScript it's kind of nutty I wish we could swap a value in for a character. We can just turn it into an array. And then we'll do the same for time afterwards. Uh, and then here We'll say if generated time dot join equals time count plus equals one. Oh, it looks like we're supposed to return one when there's no time and not zero <clears throat> when there's no question marks. So I think this should take constant time because you can, it always takes the same amount of time to generate the numbers. And as we're generating them, we're just checking if it equals the time. 
we use an array, but the array question mark index is never greater than four elements. I wonder what they mean by enumeration. That's pretty cool. I think it's funny because we were on the same we were on the same path earlier. I was thinking you could just multiply it, but I didn't. I was thinking of the multiplication would be based on iteration, and this is literally just using them straight up. Yeah, rip. I think we were on the right track. That's a pretty cool solution, though. Someone said unreadable cryptic code. <laughs> yeah, I don't, this isn't very readable to me. But maybe this person's on another level. Your friend is typing his name into a keyboard. Sometimes when typing a character C, the key might get long press and the character will be typed one or more times. You examine that this is a simulation problem, I think. Character will be typed one or more times. You examine the typed characters of the keyboard Return true if it is possible that it was your friend's name. Your friend is typing his name into a keyboard. Sometimes when typing a character C, the key might get long press. The character will be typed one or more times. You examine the typed characters of the keyboard. You examine the typed characters of the keyboard. Return true if it is possible that it was your friend's name. Some characters, possibly none, being long pressed. The name is Alex typed, and he returned Alex. So he returned true. A and E and Alex were long pressed. Saeed. It looks like this problem is just I want to say it's just It's not as simple as removing duplicates because the name can have duplicates.
if you involve duplicates, the case where the name includes duplicate characters, you get screwed. It seems rather than removing duplicates, we'd like to remove characters. characters that have greater occurrence for example in the case with Saeed in the case with Saeed we can just say okay they have typed S right but they typed two more than what was required so we can remove one they typed two A's which is one more than what was required which is fine, you can remove the extra A, but they typed one E, then was required. So it looks like as long as you type more characters than are required in the name, Actually, I'm pretty sure you could solve this with regex. Maybe if you had name and you had typed, pretty much like to say that for every, we'd like to find Saeed in typed. Let me try that just real quick, even though we're out of time. Yeah, we could solve this with regex because I think the regex for finding a letter with a specific occurrence is we can, for example, for Saeed, the ideal regex would look something like a minimum S with which had much, much we need an S that has at least Something like this, we need at least one of S, right? Then we need an A with at least one character. Uh, then we need an E with at least two characters, and they need a D with at least one character. And we could programmatically create that regex string, I think. Then we could just check if it's true. Let me just see how you would. Uh, let me just find a regex 101 thing real quick. Okay, we have located regex 101. I think we can do something like this. So it looks like this does work. So to solve this, we need a map. So create a new 
map of string to number and we'll say four of name we're going to say const value is if the map already has that letter All right we're going to get the value or occurrences for that letter letter otherwise we're going to add we're going to set it to zero do map dot set letter to value plus one then we can iterate for const letter and occurrence of map we can generate the regex string which we'll do here with the letter and the occurrence here and then we can just return type what you have to say I'm pretty sure it's called regex. Maybe okay, it turns out it's called red expression. Then we'll say type dot match regex. I forgot how to typecast in TypeScript. Isn't it something like this? Or we can wrap the whole thing in a Boolean object. We go to regex 101 place Lily in we need at least one L at least two E's oh Yeah, the map wouldn't work because it's going to give us the incorrect values. So it makes more sense to do it like this.
actually previous letters out of the question, we can just set the current letter equal to name sub i. We can just check if i plus one is less than name dot length, so it's in the range, right? And uh, current letter equals name sub i plus one. Right, then we can say count plus equals so L. We start with L for Lee Lee. Uh, the current letter would be equal to L. Then we go to E, right. It wouldn't be equal to it, right? So what we'd like to do is paste what we had in here. Something like current letter. Here would be count. And we'll say CT equals one. So now current letter will be equal to E. Right? You have the count of one. And we'll check in front of us and we'll see that we have two E's. So we'll go to the next one, right, which will be E. And it, the next letter will not be an E. So we get E equaling two, right? And I think this one should also work. I wonder if the method I use doesn't allow partial matching. Oh, right, it doesn't. What if we just say Leal? No way it does. I see. I so we return true, which is true, but they're expecting false. So I think what we need to add at the end is reg plus equal dollar sign. And I guess 
it's going to start with the caret as well. So I didn't know you needed a full match, but I'm sure there's probably a solution that's not regex, but regex is probably fine, it feels like. But we'll stop there for today.